is so good to hear you singing this morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Let's do it again. Happy New Year. Welcome to Central Christian Church, everybody. It is a new year. Maybe you're developing some new habits. Maybe you are new here. We have a place just for you. It's called the Blue Room. The Blue Room is straight out any of these tunnels on the other side of the atrium. It looks just like that because that is it. It has a blue wall. I'm going to be there after today's service. James and Shay uh, will be there as well. Just uh, a place where you can come and ask questions about this church. We also have a gift for you if you are new here. Whether you've been coming uh, for a long time or today is your first day. I'm so glad that you're here in this place today. If you're joining us online or on TV, a big welcome to you and a happy new year wherever you are. Thanks for joining us today for this service. You know, in this new year, we're praying that God brings you here if you can come. We would love to have you here uh, in a seat with us in person sometime this year. But until that day comes, everybody in the room, let's welcome all those who are not yet here in this room. All right, everybody listen up. You need to hear this. Somebody needs to hear this, all right? Greater days can be ahead for you in Jesus' name. Greater days can be ahead no matter what your past looked like. Greater days can be ahead for you. Every year, millions and millions of people make New Year's resolutions. And we know that a high percentage of those resolutions are going to fail, but still we make them. Good for you if you made one this year because you're trying to do something good. You're trying to improve some part of your life. And I have to believe that you believe that something in your life can be better than it was. So 2023 marks 170 years that Central has seen some really good days. So many people in so many places, literally around the world, from Blueford, Illinois to Brazil and everywhere else, people have come into the relationship that matters the most. People have come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ for the first time. And people have been strengthened in their walk with Christ on a daily basis. So there is no denying God's hand of blessing on his church at Central. Financially, numerically, discipleship, depth-wise, we have seen some really good days in the last 12 months. And my belief is that the same could be said of your life. That there is no denying a measure of blessing that you have seen in your life in some way. Now, I understand that a lot of people walked through a lot of really difficult days in 2022. But even with that, I guarantee if you look at it objectively, God has given you some wonderful moments. There have been some really great days in there over the last 12 months. So what I want you to do. Everybody in the room, and if you're joining us at home, whether you're on your couch or wherever you are right now, I want you to either write down or just think about the greatest day, the greatest blessing that you experienced in 2022. Okay, go ahead. I'm going to give you a minute. Go ahead, write it down or think about it. The greatest blessing that you saw in 2022, and keep that close to you because we're going to come back to it. So we know everything is not always great. Even in seasons of good, there are for sure tough times. The Bible tells us that there are seasons for everything, good and bad. King Solomon was one of the sons of King David. King Solomon was the wealthiest and wisest king of his era. Let me tell you how he got that way. It started by living an honorable life. And then in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream. And God said, what do you want? Ask, and I will give it to you. Can you imagine? I mean, like the creator of heaven and earth, the God who put it all in motion, the one who has infinite power and ability, comes and says, Wes, what is it that you want? Ask, and I will give it to you. 
I mean, that's a huge question from the greatest authority that there is. And so Solomon, of course, gives this a lot of thought. Am I going to ask for, like, endless money? Do I want to be the ruler of this kingdom for all time? Do I want life that doesn't end? Solomon thinks it through. And then in verse 9, he makes this reply to the Lord. He says, give me an understanding heart so that I can govern your people well and know the difference between right and wrong. Solomon asks for wisdom, which in and of itself is a pretty wise request. God was so pleased with Solomon's request that he did indeed grant him the wisdom he asked for. But in addition to that, he gave him everything else that he didn't ask for. He gave him the wealth. He gave him fame. He gave him a long life, the opportunity for a long life. It was in that God-given wisdom that Solomon wrote in Scripture, there's a time for everything. There's a balance to it all. There's a time for speaking and a time to be quiet. There's a time for war and a time for peace. There's a time to plant and a time to harvest. There is a time for laughing and a time for crying. In that stretch of scripture, there is one specific verse that I want to draw our attention to today. That's Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 3. It says this, there's a time to tear down and a time to build up. There's a time to tear down and a time to build up. I've thought about this a lot. I've prayed about this a ton. And over the last however long, last few months, I've asked God to give me, as the pastor of this church, as the leader of this church, God, would you give me very specific direction, vision for this church as we go into this new year? How would you have us go in 2023? I want to tell you about it. Listen, we've already talked about it a little bit. Central is abnormally blessed when it comes to, like, the church around the world. We've seen a lot uh, better days than a lot of churches have. But the latest research says this. The overall church, like the capital C church, churches everywhere that believe in Jesus Christ, has decreased in size over the last few years. As a matter of fact, the average church right now is 70% of the size that it was pre-COVID. So there's no doubt that the church has seen a season of tearing down. The church has seen a season of shutdown and lockdown and slow down, and there's a season for everything. So it is what it is, but I believe that God led me to Ecclesiastes 3 3 for 2023 because I believe that it is His will that this is a year and this is a season of building up in His church, building up our families, building up our marriages building up our relationships, building up our influence and our faith, but above all, building up his church and his kingdom. Now, I want to be clear. I'm not saying that things aren't going to be hard. We will face opposition. Jesus said, you will have trouble in this world, but take heart because I've already overcome the world. So knowing that, even when the days get difficult, we we trust what we know not what we feel. And we know that his thoughts are higher. We know that his ways are greater. And we know that the days ahead for his children and for his kingdom are greater than the days gone by. You know, we sit in a place like this or online or on TV, wherever you are, and you hear words like this. And I think sometimes just just kind of goes right over your head. You, you hear it, but you don't truly believe it. But what a sad thought that is. A sad thought that anybody, let alone God's people, would truly believe that the greatest days are behind us. Yet so many of us fall victim to that mentality all the time. We walk around beat down, with our head down, 
We, we let defeat set in, or we don't realize that it's defeat, but we're really just going through the motions. We don't have that drive or excitement. There's no spark in our eyes. The dream is dead. We've resigned ourselves to where we are, believing that the best has already been. But I cannot believe, I will not believe that that is God's desire for his church or his people. So I'm going to keep on saying it. I hope that you keep on hearing it. Whoever you are, wherever you are, there can be greater days ahead for you in Jesus' name. So how do I get there? Don't don't just tell me the what. Tell me the how, for goodness sakes. That's great. I, I hope there are greater days up there, but how do I get there? I believe that we find the greatest advice, the best roadmap to living this kind of life in uh, Micah chapter 6, verse 8. And it says this, do what is right, to love mercy, walk humbly with your God. Do what is right, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. We underestimate the power of living an honorable life. I would encourage you, like if you're going to hear something today, if you're going to write something down today, that is the resolution that will yield real results in your life this year. Determine today, right here, this morning, that you're going to do your best with God's help to live a truly honorable life. Integrity influences every single part of you. It's not a moment that you live in. It's not a season that you go through. Integrity is something that you have to full out embrace because integrity influences every single part of your life. And this is the year for you to start walking in integrity. And you say, man, I don't know a ton about living that kind of life. I've never really lived that kind of life. I made a bunch of mistakes, sort of got off track. I've not been on the right path in life a whole lot. Or maybe it's beyond what you've done and you feel like you were set up to fail from the very beginning, like you were born into the wrong family. You've got the the wrong last name. Maybe you've got a reputation that precedes you and kind of sets you up for failure right out the gate. Listen, this offer, just like salvation, this offer is for everyone to come and live an honorable life and experience the blessings that accompany righteous living. This is not health and wealth gospel. This is God's order gospel. I want to be clear, like greater days do not always mean greater pleasure for us, but it always means greater power from him. And there is more power in living an honorable life than anything that has ever defined you. In 1 Chronicles chapter 4, we read about this guy that honestly we don't know a ton about. There's this man whose name is Jabez. His name... Jabez means sorrowful or sorrow maker. Well, like, congratulations, what's your son's name? It's Jabez. He means sorrow maker. You know what I mean? Like, you go to the party from here on out. Like, hey, everybody, Jabez is coming. Oh, fantastic. That guy brings sorrow with him everywhere he goes. You have to imagine Jabez has walked through life defined by his name, right? This is the time in history where, like, your name is you're everything. I mean, it's, it's, it's who you are. It's what you do. It's where you live. That Your name defines you. And so Jabez has lived with this name that says he is a sorrow maker. But in verse 9 and 10 of this chapter, we read two verses about him that should be a lesson and an inspiration to all of us. Listen to this. First Chronicles 4, chapter nine, or verses 9 and 10. Jabez was more honorable than his brother's. So there it is right out the gate. We already see Jabez is living a life that defies the name that he's been given. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel. Everybody listen to this. This is his prayer to God. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And look at that. And God granted his request. 
And God granted his request. There is so much that we could learn from these two short verses in Scripture. But the biggest thing that I see there is that it starts with an honorable life. King Solomon, he was living an honorable life, makes a request of God, and God grants him his request. Jabez, living an honorable life, more honorable than his brothers, makes a request of God, and God grants it. Honor him in all your ways. Determine to honor him in every way that you can, in your finances, in your sexuality, in your attitude, in everything in between. Live an honorable life and see what he will do with you and for you and through you. Be faithful where he has you and be available for what he has for you. And there's one other part to this equation that we see in Solomon and Jabez, and I think it's good for us too. The other part is don't be afraid to ask. Live the honorable life. Walk with the Lord your God, and then don't be afraid to approach him with, some, with a request, just like Solomon or Jabez. As a matter of fact, Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 7, says this. You parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask him? God wants us to ask him, but I think so often that we fall into this trap of thinking walking with God is walking away from ambition. But more often, walking with God is an aligning of our ambition, making our ways his ways, his will, our action. I think you need to be reminded of this. Okay, listen. He is not, God is not a dream killer. He is the dream giver. He, he is the designer of the dream in your heart that honors him. Acts chapter 2 says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Then you know what that looks like? When God pours out his spirit upon all people, here's what happens. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. The dream is a big part of it. God's people shouldn't be quiet, lifeless robots. We should be the ones leading the way in real life. Next week, we're going to start a series called Fresh New Full. It's about uh, having that life that we're talking about. It's, it's based on what Jesus said in John 10.10. 10, I came to give them life and life to the full. God's people should be full of life. We should have these God-honoring goals that seem impossible to the people around us. We should have the highest hopes that there are. We should be the most creative, the most motivated, innovative, inspiring people who ever were. We should be the dreamers and the doers that God puts in our heart. We should dream his dreams. For every believer, ultimately, the most incredible days are still up in front of us. 1 Corinthians 2 says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. That is an incredible day and it's still up ahead. Revelation 21, he will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All of these things are gone forever. That is the greatest day. Eternally speaking, that is the greatest day that ever will be. And it is still in front of everyone who calls on Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. So we know that eternally there are great days ahead. But I'm also talking about in the here and now. Like in the immediate, we are praying that there are greater days. That Ecclesiastes 3.3 will come to be in 2023. That this will be the season that's different than the ones before. This will be the year where his people and his church experience a building up enough with the tearing down for a while. That we will pray the prayer of King Solomon. 
that God would give us wisdom like only he can and godly wisdom would rise up in his people. That we would pray the prayer of Jabez. God, would you enlarge our territory? Would you allow your hand to go with us? And we would experience new blessing and protection and expansion like we've never seen before. We're praying for blessings on your business that supports his kingdom work. We're praying for healing in your home that you had written off because you thought it was long gone and impossible. You know, the church as a whole has spent a really good amount of time just kind of like scrambling a little bit, you know, managing and maintaining what we're praying. As we see this season of building up, we're praying that this is the year that God's people shift from our heels to our toes and we go on the spiritual offensive with strength in our hearts and there's a stirring in the atmosphere because God's people are on the move in the name of Jesus and the demons run and flee because if he's for us, who can be against us? We're praying that this is the year that the living Word of God heard by more people than ever before. That this is the year that wasted years are returned to those who lost them. This is the year that relationships are rebuilt, that lives are changed in Jesus' name. This is the year that spiritually and physically we shake off the weights and we take new territory and inhabit new land under the banner of the cross. Anybody with me in this place? Come, come. Look, I don't know exactly what that looks like, but I guarantee you this, we will pray and we will seek and we will surrender our ways to his and we will not stand still. We will actively follow where he leads. But it starts with us being, every one of us, the whole church wide, every one of us being committed enough to live honorable lives. You live the honorable life, then you make the request, then you see God grant it. This is God's order, so it starts with us living honorable lives and then being bold enough to ask him to use our lives in huge ways for his glory. So whether you wrote it down earlier or it's just in your mind, I want you to think about that greatest moment of 2022 for a second. I want you to thank God for that moment. I want you to praise him in your heart for that moment of 2022. Go ahead, actually do it. And now with that in mind, Using that day or that moment as a baseline, I want you to ask God for increase in 2023, for his glory, for his kingdom. Taking that moment, ask him for greater days to be seen in 2023. Go ahead, you ask him.